all these niggas, new age gangsters, all these old niggas. They high, high, not in the city, high, not in the city. Why they homeboys getting stepped on? I ain't finna tweet for y'all today though. What it is, it's a good day, man. Long live for real. Now the, the next thing is, these groups, I won't name them, they know who they are. We're not gonna tolerate any, any retribution, any revenge. We're gonna watch. We're gonna be around, paying attention to what's going on. What do you guys wanna say to Young and Ace, if you could say something to them? Quit the violence. We, my mom, know your mom. Just quit the violence. Like, we don't want to get into this, and especially when we live close to your block. That's not real cool. So, it looks like Fulio's people are gearing up for payback, which isn't surprising when you consider how things go down in the gang world. Anytime someone from a rival gang is taken out, the typical response is to go on the offensive and exact revenge on the other side. Police say a man was chased and then shot and killed. These groups, I won't name them. They know who they are. We're not going to tolerate any any retribution, any revenge. A man was found dead in a garage on Jacksonville South Side this morning. New at five, a man in his early 20s is in the hospital right now following a shooting in Northwest Jacksonville. JSO says he was hit up to four times. In the and with Fulio being a big shot in his crew, KTA, you can bet that retaliation is on the horizon. Even though the guys responsible for Fulio's death are now behind bars, folks are still on edge, waiting to see how all this drama unfolds. Everyone's practically glued to their screens, half expecting to hear about bodies dropping one after another. But there's one name that keeps popping up as a potential big time target in all this mess. Yungin Ace. His name's been tossed around a lot since Fulio's death. And it's hard to overstate how much danger he might be in right now. Just check this video out. All these niggas, these new age gangsters, all these old They high, high, not in the city, high, not in the city. Why they homeboys getting stepped on? I ain't finna tweet for y'all today though. What it is, it's a good day, man. This is La Craca, a close associate of Fulio, who's been hitting up Instagram Live, talking about how Young Gene Ace and the ATK crew are laying low in their homes. This guy's basically suggesting that KTA is actively hunting for Ace and his people, and the only reason we haven't heard about another tragedy is because they're keeping a low profile. Everyone knows about the notorious beef between Young Gene Ace, Fulio, and their respective gangs. It's been going on for years, with both sides losing a lot of loved ones along the way. So it's pretty natural for Ace to be a prime suspect in Fulio's death. Ace didn't do himself any favors either when, just hours after Fulio's death, he dropped diss tracks claiming credit for the hit and gave interviews throwing shade at Fulio's passing. <sighs> like be life, man. Zip sipping on my drink and shit. Some might see this as typical behavior in the gang world, but as more info comes out, it's making Ace look more and more suspicious. For instance, some guy went online recently, claiming he's the one who actually murdered Fulio for a payout of $10,000, allegedly from Young Gene Ace. Fulio had it coming to him, so you know, I don't really feel sorry, you feel me? A lot of people think that you know it was on some game. Now, sure, this guy might be clout chasing for views, but if you know how these things work in the streets, you know that it doesn't matter if Ace put out the hit or not. What really matters is what people think. If Fulio's people believe Ace had something to do with it, they're going to want to make him pay, whether he's guilty or not. Gangs aren't exactly known for their fact-checking or concern for evidence. And even though the authorities have come out saying they won't put up with any retaliation or revenge from rival gangs, the streets have their own set of rules and they're not too concerned with what the police tolerate. Now the, the next thing is, these groups, I won't name them, they know who they are. We're not going to tolerate any, any retribution, any revenge. We're going to watch. We're going to be around paying attention to what's going on. Now, to really get a grasp on how we ended up in this mess, we need to dive a little deeper into the history between these guys. What do you guys want to say to Young and Ace, if you could say something yeah. to him? Quit the violence. We, my mom, know your mom. Just quit the violence. Like, we don't want to get into this, and especially when we live close to your block. That's not real cool. So back in 2021, there was a song that everyone on social media couldn't stop talking about. Who I Smoke by Yungin Ace. This track didn't just make waves, it shed light on one of the deadliest rap feuds brewing for years in Jacksonville, Florida. These Jacksonville rappers had this unique style of dropping clues about revenge kings in their music videos, often using beats from classic pop songs and layering them with some of the most sinister lyrics. Yungin Ace and his crew took Vanessa Carlton's A Thousand Miles, flipped it completely, and filmed the video on a posh golf course, smoking cigars and dancing while the lyrics celebrated the of Fulio's crew from North Jacksonville. Who I Smoke went viral almost instantly, racking up 16 million views in just a month and getting reactions from all the big influencers online. Who I Smoke, 
Say it. No! Hey, hey, Fulio, come get this I've seen. Just, you know why? They ain't show one gun in the video. But the way they seem to be just nonchalantly have, like, enjoy life while clowning and die? With such a bold move from young Gene Ace, Fulio felt the need to hit back even harder. Fulio took a classic Fantasia song, remixed it, and for the music video, he printed out a massive poster of two of Ace's friends and his blood brother who had died beside Ace in a drive-by shooting outside a Japanese steakhouse. Ace was the only survivor in that car attack. Who I Smoke came out of nowhere, went crazy, kind of made it more mainstream to where people who don't even know y'all, they were tapped into it. Mm -hmm. How I took it too far when they made a song for a speaker. Once the dead get involved, it's already too far. Corbin ass was lost until they found them in that bag. Oh. Corbin Johnson was last seen alive in July of last year. Then last Friday, a man discovered the, the victim's skeletal remain. From that point on, Fulio's crew and young Gein Ace's crew began a back and forth of diss tracks aimed squarely at each other, each song embedded with hidden messages and taunts. Now, let's set the scene in Jacksonville, Florida, the biggest city in the continental U.S. by land area. Florida's always been a major player in the rap scene, but Jacksonville didn't really make it to the mainstream until these viral diss tracks between two rival crews put it on the map. On one side, you've got Young Gene Ace leading the ATK gang, which mainly runs the west side of Jacksonville. On the other side, there's Fulio, the head of KTA, also known as Kill Them All. KTA is an alliance between Fulio's gang from the north side and another crew called Young and Reckless from the south side. Young Gene Ace, whose real name is Kayonta Bullard, was actually born in Chicago and is one of 12 brothers. Growing up without a father figure since his dad was in prison, Ace moved around a lot with his single mom before they finally settled in Jacksonville. Ace looked up to his uncle, but when his uncle passed away when Ace was just 14, he turned to the streets to cope with his pain and anger. This is where he found his passion for music and formed his crew, ATK. He started releasing music in 2014, but it wasn't until 2018 that he really began to gain traction with songs like No Witness, All In, and Find Myself. His raw and real lyrics quickly earned him a strong online following. Fulio, on the other hand, always had a knack for rapping but didn't take it seriously until he dropped out of school in the ninth grade. Without money for studio time, he hustled hard to make things happen. In 2015, he started gaining attention with songs like Coming Up, which helped him start booking shows and earning money from his music. He branded himself with his crew, KTA, and over the next few years, his popularity in Florida's music scene skyrocketed. The beef between Young Ace and Fulio kicked off around 2017 over what both sides say was a misunderstanding. It's a bit murky on what exactly happened, but it quickly escalated from a simple disagreement to a full-blown war. What makes this feud even more tragic is the number of mutual friends both sides had. While Ace and Fulio were never exactly tight, they shared friends like Queso, Queso, who is currently locked up with his father on charges for two murders, including the K-wording of Fulio's blood brother Bibby, played a significant role in the beef. After Bibby's murder, Queso infamously wore Bibby jerseys and took photos like trophies. He even released an album in 2019 with images of his dead rivals on the cover, like a twisted Mount Rushmore of fallen enemies. Jacksonville Police, or JSO, are notorious for not solving cases. In fact, 70% of murders in the city go unsolved. This led to the online catchphrase, JSO loves Queso, because Queso blatantly broadcasts his actions on social media. Despite this, all of Queso's songs have millions of views on YouTube. YouTube, and he was even close with King Von. Queso even appeared in that infamous video where Quando Rondo and King Von were joking around before their tragic fallout. Dirty <laughs> Queso was there as well. But back in Jacksonville, Queso had built quite a reputation for his ruthless behavior. One of his most infamous stunts was trying to organize a real life teen death match with his own cousins, who were part of the rival gang KTA. What's up, where you at? Come on, I do a teen death match. Right now? Yeah, I'll do words us too. Look at my cousin. One of these cousins was Lil Nine. Just a month after their heated online exchange, Lil Nine was ambushed while leaving a gas station. He was shot 12 times by a rifle from another car, causing his vehicle to crash into a nearby tire shop. Tragically, Lil Nine was pronounced dead at the scene. While people at the tire shop were desperately trying to revive him, Lil Nine's friend, who had been with him during the attack, was frantically walking around the store, filming the aftermath. Who the fuck played? Played. Played. Queso wasted no time responding with a video, laughing at the situation. 
To make things even more twisted, Queso's blood brother, who was also Lil Nine's cousin, recreated the gruesome scene from the tire shop in a video. Get out! <laughs> Get out! Y'all fucking play. Y'all play. Y'all play. 60 days later, Queso dropped a music video where he put a photo of his own deceased cousin, Lil Nine, in a microwave. The biggest step of the oh, biggest hey. The craziest part of this whole feud is that all these guys were once friends. K So met Yungi Nace in the ninth grade, and they had been tight ever since. But Fulio likes to remind K So that back in 2015, he used to hang out with them, and even had the nickname Six Block K So because of his affiliation with Fulio's gang, Six Block. Even Yungi Nace admitted he was a fan of Fulio's music before their beef got out of control. But a series of unfortunate events forced everyone to pick sides quickly. It all came to a head at a block party in South Jacksonville, which was in Y and R territory, a crew led by Y and R Mookie, and his right-hand man, Slugga T. Ace and his gang showed up to the party and got into an argument with y &R's leader, Mookie. Shots were fired, and a bullet grazed Mookie. Slugga T fired back, but Ace and his crew managed to escape, leaving the situation tense and volatile. To make matters worse, Mookie was already friends with Fulio's cousin, which made it easy for Y and R and Fulio's gang to form an alliance under the name KTA, or kill them all, with a shared enemy, Young Gene Ace and his crew ATK. The situation in Jacksonville was getting worse, with the murder rate climbing year after year. In 2017, Young Gene Ace dropped the song Go to War, which was pretty much an open challenge to anyone opposing ATK. Not long after, Ace's home got shot up, signaling that things were about to get really intense. But the real tipping point came a few months later. One of Ace's friends went out looking for revenge after he got robbed. He knew exactly where the robber was staying, at Fulio's cousin's house on the west side of Jacksonville. Determined to get payback, he snuck into the house by throwing a brick through the sliding door and entering from the back. He started shooting with no mask and no gloves, aiming for the robber, but instead ended up K-wording Fulio's cousin Zion and wounding a nine-year-old girl. This tragic incident marked the real beginning of the war between ATK and KTA. Zion's death was a catalyst that set off a chain of retaliations. According to witnesses, Thomas broke out a sliding glass door, walked inside and began shooting, hitting a nine-year-old and a teenager. 18-year-old Zion Brown died at the hospital. Investigators believe Thomas was not alone when he shot Brown and two children. Not long after Zion's death, his sister was shot 14 times in an attempt to prevent her from testifying in court. Miraculously, she survived. The friend of Young Ace who did the shooting was eventually sentenced to life in prison. But this was just the beginning of the violence. With Fulio's cousin being the first to die in this beef, KTA was looking to make a swift and powerful statement of revenge. Ace's music career was starting to gain serious traction around this time. His new song, F That, was getting millions of views on Worldstar in just a few days, and fans were already comparing him to NBA Youngboy. Then, just a week later, tragedy struck. Four young men were in this car when they were shot. The vehicle pulled up to their Chevy sedan, opened fire, then took off. And one is in critical condition at the hospital. It was a Tuesday in June 2018. Ace, his brother and two friends were headed to Wasabi, a Japanese steakhouse, to celebrate his friend's 18th birthday. Everyone was in high spirits, taking photos and enjoying the evening, but they had no idea that they were being watched the whole time. Rivals had found out their location through Ace's Instagram story where he posted photos outside the steakhouse and even recorded his friends eating inside. Their enemies waited outside, watching them, and then followed them as they left the restaurant and drove along the highway. When they reached a red light, the shooters opened fire on the passenger side of Ace's car, K wording his two best friends and his brother and leaving Ace in critical condition. It was a quadruple shooting and the news spread quickly. Fulio got word before anyone else and mistakenly thought Ace was dead. <laughs> The boy lost the Fortnite match. <laughs> I took over the line. Cold summer alert, man. Two, three pack, man. Ace pack, bitch. Of course, young Gene Ace managed to survive that brutal attack, but it left him devastated, losing his brother and two best friends. We stopped at a red light. All you heard was. Nah, 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 nah. Fire, pop, pop, pop. 
You know, and they my hand, I drop my phone. Despite the tragedy, the attention he was getting started to boost his career. Even NBA Youngboy reached out to him via FaceTime to collaborate on a song. This motivated Ace to create his biggest hit ever, Pain, which blew up and now has over 60 million views on YouTube. However, the violin didn't stop. Every time Ace released a new track, his rival YNR Mookie would drop a diss track with the same title, turning the feud into a deadly musical back and forth. The situation got so intense that the Jacksonville police had to step in. They created a special unit called the Violet Production Strategy Team, dedicated to analyzing music videos from both sides, looking for any clues. The assistant chief even mentioned in an interview that the music wasn't just for entertainment, it was real and deadly serious. In February 2019, things took another tragic turn. Fulio's little brother Bibby became the next target. Bibby was only 16 years old and was coming home from school just hanging out in his own neighborhood at the Hilltop Apartments on the north side of Jacksonville. He was chilling on a gazebo in the courtyard with a friend, both of them looking at their phones. Suddenly, gunfire erupted. The boys dropped their phones and ran in different directions, desperately trying to find cover. In just 15 seconds, 60 rounds were fired. Bibby was K-worded instantly. A year later, court documents were unsealed, revealing that the police had named K so as the gunman responsible for Bibby's murder. According to the documents, Queso and his crew had been circling the complex for hours, waiting for the right moment. When they finally saw Bibby, they sprang into action, unleashing a barrage of Draco rounds. Queso allegedly walked up to Bibby, who was on the ground trying to shield himself from the gunfire, and executed him at close range before fleeing the scene in a gray Nissan. Adding insult to injury, Queso had a habit of wearing Bibby jerseys and posting photos on his Instagram celebrating the murder as if it were some kind of trophy. This kind of behavior only fueled the hatred and violence between the rival gangs. For Fulio, losing his brother and his cousin in such a short span of time was a massive blow. The grief was overwhelming. But 2019 also marked a pivotal year for his music career. He was dropping hits that were racking up millions of views, one after another, all independently. Fulio was becoming a significant name in Florida, yet he hadn't quite reached the level where he could tour the country solo. Meanwhile, his rival, Young Gene Ace, was booking shows across multiple states. Just a month after Fulio's brother was unalived, Ace had a performance at a nightclub in Waycross, Georgia. After the show, Ace and his crew headed back to their hotel to chill by the pool. Out of nowhere, an SUV pulled up, and a group of guys jumped out, guns blazing. K so was there with Ace, and he didn't hesitate for a second to shoot back. During the shootout, Queso's friend Rallo was K-worded by the pool. What made things even more messed up was that only Ace's side got arrested for firing back, while the other gunmen vanished without a trace. K, so, so didn't hold back in his song Been Dead with lyrics that went, should have offed me in Waycross, and they hopped out with the K's, me and Scotty bussing back were on the same page. This was the same music video where he notoriously put a photo of his cousin Lil Nine in the microwave. Fast forward a month after dropping that track, and K, as so, found himself arrested for a completely different murder alongside his father, who was charged as an accessory after the fact. The story goes that they were avenging a diss by a rival rapper named KTA Lil Buck. Buck had dissed Case So's older brother who died in a brutal ambush. Two cars had rolled up on a van full of Queso's relatives, blocking them off and spraying 100 bullets into the vehicle. This feud was beyond personal. It was a vicious cycle of revenge that seemed never-ending. Lil Buck was more than just a fellow rapper to Fulio. He was a close friend, and his death was a devastating blow. ATK allegedly got the drop on Buck, rolling up on him at 11 in the morning while he was applying for a job. It was a calculated assassination. Afterward, Queso posted posted on his Insta story bragging, I K a dude, then get my toes done. Receiving a pedicure with the caption, kill a n-word, then go get my toes done. This wasn't the first hit to happen at a job site. Another rapper, Jump Out, who had beef with Young Geen Ace and ATK, was K-worded while waiting in line to apply for a job at an Amazon warehouse. This incident inspired the infamous line in, Who I Smoke, Where They Rap, found out where he was working and clocked him out. The war between these crews had escalated to a point where no one was safe, no matter where they were. Shootings could happen anytime, anywhere. Fulio had lost a dozen friends to either death or prison. Mookie and Slugga T were behind bars, and even Fulio's girlfriend had been shot in the head. Y'all thought I was dead. Y'all ain't underscore this yet.
A boy. Young Gene Ace is still carrying a bullet casing from that quadruple shooting outside the Wasabi Steakhouse. Then the hip-hop community was rocked by the tragic news of Fulio's death. It was a harsh wake-up call about the dangers of gang violence. Fulio had survived four attempts on his life in the past four years, but the fourth one tragically ended his life. Now the streets are buzzing with tension, and everyone's on edge wondering what's going to happen next. If things aren't handled carefully, we might be looking at another tragic headline soon. There's a real possibility that young Gene Ace, along with many members of his ATK crew, could be front and center in the inevitable cycle of revenge. 